Welcome to the newest episode in an ongoing Legendarium series about the plagues that have struck and shaped humanity. In this installment, the Justinian Plague, we will talk about how the Emperor Justinian's plans to restore the Roman Empire to its former glory were sundered by the plague which would one day bear the emperor's name. By the time it made its way through Africa, Europe, and Asia, almost one-tenth the human population of the time had died. When Emperor Justinian took the throne in 527 AD, he ruled only half the empire that Augustus had 500 years before. Barbarian kings had carved up the West 50 years before Justinian's time. But over the first decade of his rule, Justinian reconquered North Africa and Italy. Yet a plague would bring his restoration to a halt. This disease likely originated in China or Northeast India, then made its way west on the trade routes that crisscrossed the Indian Ocean. Eventually, this disease made its way to the East African coast, where the East Romans maintained a number of trade routes that stretched as far south as modern-day Tanzania. Justinian also had several provinces in North Africa that served as the breadbasket of his empire. Egypt and modern-day Libya sent carts and ships filled with grain, olive oil, ivory, papyrus, and slaves not only to Constantinople, but all of the great cities in the East Roman Empire. Rats got into the grain supplies and were soon transported across the empire, carrying the disease with them. The disease first appeared in the city of Pelisium, located on the east bank of the Nile, and it spread in two directions, north to Alexandria and east to Palestine. Even worse, it took place in a time of war and famine, which caused both soldiers and refugees to be on the move and serving as plague carriers. And to learn more about the climate changes that caused famine at this time, follow the link in the description. What was Justinian's plague? Most likely, it was an early strain of the bubonic plague, which would strike again as the Black Death 800 years later. This strain of the disease is caused by a bacterium that lives in fleas, which in turn live on rats. When the rats died foaming at the mouth and thrashing about, the fleas simply jumped to human hosts. This early strain of bubonic plague not only caused fever, gangrene, and pain, but inflicted delusions and nightmares upon the victim before they slipped into a coma. Following the established trade routes of the empire, the disease erupted in Ethiopia, Egypt, and Constantinople. In the capital city of the empire, Constantinople, 5,000 people died each day at the height of the plague. Even Justinian caught the disease, but unlike many of his subjects, he survived. Corpses littered the streets of Constantinople. After gravediggers filled up the graveyards and tombs, they simply began digging burial pits and trenches, then hurling the dead into them. In time, they loaded corpses into boats and threw the bodies into the water, and unfortunately, the tide simply carried the dead back to shore. People became so fearful of dying while they were outside the house that they took to wearing name tags so people would know where to return their body should they die. Lacking access to physicians, people used home remedies, such as powders blessed by saints, magic amulets and rings, and cold water baths to fend off the bubonic plague. A frantic population also came to believe that a spirit or demon was causing the plague. It was said to appear in a dream or show itself as people woke up and anybody who saw it was believed to come down with the plague soon after. This belief likely had its origins in that many of the infected had delusions which were believed to be visions by people at the time. 
This belief that demons were causing the plague also led people to seek out monks to perform exorcisms. These exorcisms did nothing to help the plague victims. Indeed, one community came to believe that the monks were in fact demons and drove them from the village. Justinian's plague killed as many as 50 million people across Europe, Asia, and Africa, which was 10% of the world's 500 million people. Fearing that they would catch the plague, people simply barred themselves in their houses and abandoned dying friends and relations. Agriculture was devastated because so many farm workers died and farmland was simply reclaimed by the wilderness. Skills were lost as blacksmiths and carpenters and stonemasons died in such numbers that they could not pass along what they'd learned. International trade came to a standstill. The East Roman Empire would never be as strong as it once had. And in a final hardship inflicted upon people already caught in a cycle of despair, Justinian kept taxes at the pre-plague levels to continue financing his wars against the Vandals and Goths. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.